Here are nine mistakes this dumbass made while building this roof. But I learned a lot. One big freaking roof, guys. So here's my list. Nine, or actually 10 things I would have done different while building this roof. Uh, the last one is not really a mistake. Or something I would do different next time. So yeah, these are most things that I would um, consider doing differently the next time. Number one, check your delivered materials. So I ordered a lot of uh, wood to start with, to do the, um, the ridge beams and the rafters. And I ordered the rafters at three meters 70. I made there a little bit of a rough calculation, um, but eventually they got delivered in uh, three meters 63. And my mistake here was that I didn't check the order as soon as it arrived. Uh, it was only, I think, a couple of months later, uh, when I really started working on the house, uh, that I noticed uh, that the rafters weren't fitting. And this is why we have the, um, the gap in the middle. So we have a rafter on this side and we have a rafter on that side. And in the middle, on the ridge beam, there is um, a gap in between the rafters. Now, in hindsight, with the overhang we have, I could have um, put the rafters a little bit further towards the ridge beam. But with the walls and all not being straight, I wasn't sure of that uh, when we started with this. Because the house is uh, wider at some points than uh, at other points. So yeah, I would have uh, checked those delivered materials. Because then I would have sent them back and gotten 3 meter 70. And then they would have connected on the top and I could also have uh, put the decking further over. Let me show you. Hey Zoe. So now you see here a little bit of um, insulation and uh, if these would have touched each other I would have also let the decking run a little further and then you would not have seen uh, the insulation. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take um, one of these pieces of decking and put them in front here for all the holes between the rafters. So yeah, that's a lot more extra work and something I definitely would have done different next time. Uh, number two, rafter spacing. So um, I put my rafters now at 50 centimeters. Every 50 centimeters has a rafter. Um, but at first, to also save on, uh, on wood, I wanted to do 60 centimeters. And it would have probably saved a couple of hundred bucks in uh, rafters. Um, I decided not to do that eventually because the um, decking that we used was two meters ten. And if we would have gone with 60 centimeters, okay, so this needs a little more explanation. <laughs> we weren't going to use the um, vertical tongue and groove. That was not the idea because we thought it wouldn't look nice. So we wanted to cut it exactly on the rafter and then start a new piece of decking. And that's why we decided to put the rafters on 50 centimeters uh, because then we only had to cut 10 centimeters of the decking every time instead of three times 60 centimeters, 180, and we should have cut 30 centimeters off. Um, but eventually we decided that it wasn't uh, a bad thing to see also the, the tongue and groove that is vertically. So yeah, maybe if we would have got, given that a little bit more thought, then that would have saved um, a couple of hundred bucks on rafters because 
for the support i don't think it really needed every 50 centimeters i think 60 centimeters would have been enough also so probably on the next roof we'll do 60 centimeters we'll see then one of the main points uh number three the overhang this overhang and mainly when we did the first part of the roof uh, so this was uh, in one of the videos also uh, a big failure of mine <laughs> I'm probably gonna run you a small piece of the clip now to show you uh, what exactly happened uh, basically um, the walls in Portugal are not straight so what they often do let me see if I can find this for you somewhere Just a second. Okay, so maybe in my village we don't have a really clear sample of this. But here they do it with um, the lowest row of um, roof tiles. They are, they are put in like in a straight line, but the walls of the house are not always in a straight line. So you can maneuver a little bit and make at least a sort of straight line for your roof tiles to end on. This is also a very straight wall, but imagine that this wall wasn't that straight and that first row of tijolos there, the white ones, these are tijolos, they put them flat and then based on how not straight the wall is, they hang over more on one point than on the other point. And so you can at least have like a straight line to end your roof tiles on. So, another thing has uh, gone wrong on the build. Yes, um, as a teacher you can, uh, you can also display a lot of your mistakes and then people can learn from your mistakes. And that's a good thing to learn from, right? So, continuing this series, how not to build a roof. Uh, eventually we'll, uh, we'll get to the part where we really built a roof. Uh, that's gonna last, but um, we're not there yet. I also come from the perspective that uh, from your mistakes you can learn. So mistakes are not that bad, but it costs you um, costs you some more work. Six months down the road, I'll know how to build a roof. No, we're not going to take that long. Uh, so what happened? Um, as you can see from the comments from the last video, a lot of people uh, told me already that uh, something is not going to work. Uh, let me show you what is not going to work. As you saw from the last video, we're gonna we have created a straight line here with these bricks. So a straight line means a straight line the same as the ridge beam. So it has the same distance here and it has the same distance there. That's useful because you can use uh, the rafters on the same uh, cuts. As I said this was um, advice from my builder but this is a Portuguese builder. So I connected two uh, building styles together in a not so good way. Yeah what the Portuguese do is they uh, they do it like this but uh, but in Portugal the rafters end in the wall and then what they do is they level out the last two rows of um, roof tiles and they cement them in so when you do that there is not a lot of weight on the overhang you have because it's just two rows of tiles with some cement now i connected two building styles together um, because we want to do like a northern european roof where the rafters hang over the wall um, but you cannot combine these two because there's going to be too much pressure here on this part of the brick because the whole rafter and thus the whole roof is going to rest on the overhang here. So the reason I wanted to do like a northern European roof is because of the, um, the water barrier we put in. It needs to come out in the gutter. So here is going to be um, the roof decking and then you have um, the water barrier that goes on the roof uh, decking. But if the um, rafters would end in the wall you wouldn't get the water barrier to come to the gutter. So I actually uh, don't have any idea how the Portuguese would do that if this if they put in a water barrier. But so, yeah, we need to um, take some of this uh, part down again. Uh, it needs to uh, look like this, because here the rafter is resting on the wall. And on the other side it's resting on the overhang. So right here. And look, you can see here already, Whew. we tried to put on the roof decking. And as soon as we started uh, putting nails in, this broke off. So yeah, that already tells you that uh, you're not doing it the right way. So I removed all that back then and decided just to cut the, um, the rafters 
every single one of them in their own place. Yeah, so this was a little bit of a confusion, uh, mainly in my head, between uh, a Dutch or another European building style, where you have an overhang, and a Portuguese building style, where you don't have an overhang. So yeah, I don't know if I'm uh, gonna do that any different in the next project. I do, however, want to do one project sometime and do a roof in a Portuguese way, without the overhang, but still have it watertight. Don't know how that's gonna work out. <laughs> Number four, the gable on the east side. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. So this is a whole story in itself. <laughs> What I did now is I made um, a small overhang of uh, two, three centimeters. And we're still gonna do that on the other side also. Not the cracky corner side, but the other side. And the idea is to uh, just cement it up. This still needs to be rendered off. And then uh, cement it up and get a small overhang uh, so that the water, uh, rainwater, not directly hits the wall. Um, it's quite okay on this side because here it, we started with the flat part of the roof tile But if I show you this side It doesn't look really nice. It still needs to be rendered also, but because mainly um, The tiles here started from the, yeah, the side where is the bump It really doesn't look that nice now the reason they needed to be cut it off uh, for one is because this wall is also not straight. It basically goes uh, inwards, uh, the further it goes to the top. Um, I asked the Portuguese what they would do here. And they would just cement up this whole part with a really big thick piece of render to get it at least all uh, in the same distance. So that the overhang of the roof tiles everywhere is at the same distance. Uh, I cut them eventually to get the overhang the same distance everywhere. Uh, what I maybe rather would have done is um, create a sort of ladder. This is also like an overhang on this side. And Nick from uh, Project Portugal, he gave me back then already that tip. He said, I would do that if I were you. <laughs> maybe he wasn't wrong. It's like um, you create a sort of extra rafter here on the outside with support uh, from the wall. And then you let the tiles go a little bit further. So that you basically have, like we have an overhang here, you would also have an overhang here. Um, yeah, then you could create that straight and you wouldn't have to cut the tiles. And from the inside, you probably wouldn't see that there's a little bit difference in the width of the ladder here and the width of the ladder here. So that will be a good option for the next project, I think. Um, a lot of people say it will get uh, wet, the wall, and you will also get wet inside. Uh, I didn't have that problem until now. Uh, there are also other solutions to finish off this gable. Uh, later on, uh, I'll put a piece of the video in here. It's like um, they cement up a sort of block or row on the end. And I don't know how exactly how they do this, but maybe this is also an option. And maybe it can also still be done on this roof. Where's my book? Number five. So also for the roof, but this is mainly a thing in general. Uh, I took a lot of materials from uh, Holland. The screws and the nails and stuff we used on this uh, roof. And I think the next time I wouldn't spend all the effort and the money to take these things with rather small kind of budget and small kind of price difference and spend all the effort to take it from Holland. Uh, now fair to say uh, there's a lot more that I took than what's used on this roof and there are a lot of handy stuff but sometimes I hear also people I think make the mistake is like we're bringing everything from Holland. A lot of things maybe don't worth, are not worth it. Because for instance, what you need to calculate is also, it takes storage here. And probably before I use the last screw, we're five years ahead already. And I've been dragging these crates 
up and forth to different locations. As soon as we are gonna work on the shed, all the stuff that is in there needs to move to somewhere else again, including the rest of the screws. So for that 350 euro, for instance, that the screws and nails and stuff were for this roof, yeah, on a whole budget of seven and a half thousand euro, I would have just bought that in, uh, in Portugal. Six, the type of roof tiles that I used. So these were uh, the cheapest ones, Lusa Asa Atlas. The advantage of these is that they lay like straight under each other instead of overlapping half every time like with bricks. One thing I, I don't like working with with these tiles is like the bump that is in there. Because with cementing up the ridge tiles and stuff, you get to fill like really big holes. And also if we end up on the ends, exactly in, in one of these uh, bulbs, then it doesn't look really nice. And for instance, these tiles that we also used on the mini building, these are Marseille tiles, I think. And these are a lot more flat. But those have the disadvantage that they um, need to be half over every time. So the second row is half a tile scooched over. And so then you always need to cut like the ends at the gable sides. Uh, but they lay a lot easier and also I imagine the ridge tiles going on there a lot uh, easier um, with less gaps to fill. Now these Marseille tiles are a little bit more expensive. But um, I wouldn't have mind, for instance, uh, paying 1500 for the tiles instead of uh, 1000 If these ridge tiles would have gone on a little bit more easy. <laughs> so maybe there's also other type of tiles that have maybe the advantages of both. I don't know. But I'm going to check that out for the next project. If I want to do that with the Lusa Atlas tiles or maybe with other tiles. So then uh, number seven. Uh, yeah, kind of an uh, obvious one. You saw in the what cost the roof, uh, what costed the roof video. You saw that um, the price increase in the last two years um, was quite significant. Now I think also for the next couple of years, like for instance, the prices of wood will not be going down very much, and I, I also doubt this for uh, for other prices like tiles and stuff. Um, so I would have bought uh, more and I would have made sure that in the beginning I had uh, all the materials here already. There is a little bit of counter argument for that because you need to have good storage for the wood for instance. Otherwise either your beam is laying outside for a year <laughs> or your battens are like going complete bananas. Um, but if I know now what projects I'm going to do for the next two years. I think I'm gonna buy a lot of building uh, materials uh, in one time and I don't know how I'm gonna do that with storage. Maybe we're gonna buy some big storage containers like the, um, like the metal containers. Um, but I think I could save a lot even if I buy um, a lot of stuff now uh, for the upcoming years. What do you guys think about that? Would it be efficient for me to buy a lot of stuff now? Or do you guys think that the prices are still coming down uh, somewhere? Then, number eight. I should have done this whole roof uh, at once. Yeah, that's like a, a goal with the head, we say like in Holland. Or uh, a shot, shot in front of an open goal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I made it myself more difficult because uh, I did it in two times. The reason I did it in two times was because I was still living, needed to live, I thought, in one part. So what I actually could have done on hindsight, I could have moved into this shed uh, for the first period or for instance the mini building um, while I did this whole roof all at once. Um, because also like you get like a sort of system down when you're cutting rafters or when you're laying ridge tiles and if you especially like me wait a year in between then you sort of have to reinvent it but like get into the same it takes a while to get into the same behavior to put them in like how you did before it wasn't really that bad but in hindsight, uh, also due to the speed and not needing to move around all my stuff everywhere, 
um, I should have found maybe a different solution for me to live while I was working on this house. So that I think I definitely would have done different. Uh, next time we're only going to do a one full roof. But that's also because I mainly have a place to stay now. Number nine. Yeah, so maybe I should have done a smaller project first. <laughs> uh, the shed here. So in hindsight, I could have also like moved in here for a while and then first do uh, this shed up with a nice small roof. <laughs> no, I think to get the feeling down that it would have been, uh, been a good idea. This was my first roof I ever did. So in hindsight, I should have started with this roof of this small shed here to get a little bit of an idea of what it takes to, uh, to build a roof. Uh, because that first part took us, I think, a little over four months. And the second part from March to the end of May. So we did that a lot faster, although it was a little bit bigger. But yeah, I knew already uh, what I needed to do here on the second part. So yeah, number nine would have been, I would have started with a smaller project first. I also could have started with the Mini. <laughs> yeah, so keep in mind there were uh, a whole lot of mistakes that I made uh, during the process uh, of building this roof. Miscalculations and things I thought I could do that I couldn't, <laughs> like cement the straight row of tijolos. Um, but these are like the main uh, 10 parts, nine parts that I would um, consider doing differently. Most of them I would do differently. <laughs> Number 10, the one we've all been waiting for. I should have hired a professional to do this job. No, I shouldn't. It's, much, <laughs> it's way too much fun. <laughs> and it gives you a great uh, feeling of uh, satisfaction if you uh, complete something uh, like this by yourself. Not completely by yourself, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it builds uh, a lot of confidence for a lot of other jobs that we still want to do. Uh, the professional. So yeah, first of all, the professional uh, would not have done it like this. Especially not a Portuguese professional. So I asked uh, a, a Portuguese local here uh, who does construction and he gave me a quote. He said somewhere between uh, 12 and 15,000 euro in labor. He said it would have taken uh, three to four weeks uh, with two people uh, to get this uh, 128 square meter roof replaced. Uh, also the material costs uh, would have been a lot different then because um, he would have used a different type of insulation and he would have used not the decking but normal wood and stuff uh, because he wouldn't know how to work with this or he would know but he wouldn't like offer to do this. So in his offerings the, the materials would have also had a different price but mainly um, my question to him was if I would have asked you to replace my roof uh, what would it, what would have the, the labor costs have been? So, and, uh, and based on uh, their hourly rate, it's like um, 40 hours a week. And then for, uh, for three to four weeks with two people. Uh, I think uh, they would have hired a, a crane or something to put in the ridgepins. <laughs> or brought some friends for that day. <laughs> so yeah, this was a really a good uh, project for me. Uh, I learned a lot and uh, you guys also saw it, I think, uh, well, I hear it in your comments a lot, that uh, we've come a long way since uh, the beginning of this part. And I learned a freaking lot. I don't want to say it too loud, but I think how I tackled this, there's no other roof that uh, I can't do here. This part is going to have a flat roof. I never did a flat roof before. <laughs> that could still be exciting. <laughs> So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. Did I miss any mistakes? Did you guys uh, see any big mistakes in the videos that, uh, I, uh, that I forgot to mention? Any things that you guys would have done different? <laughs> there goes the comments. Uh, on to the next roof. This will be probably next season. We still got a lot to do here inside. Zoe, say goodbye.
I'll pay my clean on. See y'all. Bye. I had a lot more, but I only selected uh, <laughs> the nine biggest ones.